This is Matador News, and these are today's headlines. President Obama visits Saudi Arabian King Salman, rescue efforts continue after a strong aftershock hits Ecuador, and massive flooding in Houston doesn't look to slow down as heavy rainfall is expected throughout the weekend. Hello, and welcome to Matador News. I'm Angel Johnson. And I'm Susanna Guzman. Goodbye, Andrew Jackson, and hello, Harriet Tubman. The Treasury Department has announced Tubman will replace Jackson on the redesigned $20 bill in 2020. The bill will come just in time for the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment giving women the right to vote. Harriet Tubman is known for helping slaves to freedom on the Underground Railroad in the 19th century. First Secretary of Treasury Alexander Hamilton will continue to be the face of the $10 bill. Two Michigan workers and a city employee have been charged with misconduct and other charges in the Flint water crisis. Mike Glisco, former supervisor of the Flint water plant, could face up to five years in prison and thousands of dollars in fines. The other two men are being charged, are, who are being charged are Stephen Bush and Mike Prisby, employees of the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. They face up to 20 years in prison and more than $35,000 in fines. The state says they could also face additional fines for each day that the violation occurred in the State Water Drinking Act. Flint, Flint's water it was contaminated with lead about two years ago, affecting thousands of residents, causing serious health problems. A 6.1 aftershock hit, hit Ecuador this morning. This happened after the South American nation suffered a 7.8 magnitude earthquake over the weekend. It killed 480 people so far. and, and injured more than 4,000. Ecuador is sending troops and police officers to help the affected areas. The defense minister, Ricardo Patino, says that it is going to take them years to recover. This is the deadliest earthquake Ecuador has experienced since 1987. Now let's join Matador News reporter Shereen Atkinson in the newsroom as she explores the correlation, be the re the correlation between recent earthquakes. Thanks, Susanna. As we just heard, one massive earthquake hit the equator in South America, and another earthquake hit the Japanese island of Kyushu. This earthquake hit on the opposite side of the Pacific with a magnitude of 7.0. CSUN geology professor Dick Hermans was able to give some insight on the correlation between the two. It's really just a coincidence that they happen to happen so close together. They're, it's a, they're, they're not related. Uh, in terms of, of a tectonic environment, but uh, they just happen to be very close together. But does this mean that we should be alarmed about an earthquake occurring uh, no, in Southern not California at all. I think soon? We still have the same probability. It's a relatively high probability that we have an earthquake uh, of roughly that size in the next 30 years or so. But uh, just because we've had two earthquakes in the last week doesn't mean that we're likely to have another earthquake this week in Southern California. These earthquakes have killed hundreds and caused massive amounts of damage. And experts say it is important to always be prepared for an earthquake. According to CDC, you should always keep 5 to 10 cases of water, canned food to last 7 to 10 days, and flashlights with spare batteries in case of an earthquake occurs at night. Back to Angel in the studio. Mayor Eric Garcetti will be t talking about his proposed budget for his final year in contract with the Los Angeles Police Department. In his budget, he says he wants to increase funding for anti-homelessness. The, the $8.76 billion budget proposal would slightly increase the size of Los Angeles workforce over 33,000. Homelessness is likely to receive the most attention in the budget's final version. City officials are already planning to place a new bond or tax on the ballot to provide long-term funding and housing for the homeless. Another issue on the contract of $31 million to provide the LAPD officers with body cameras. Although many people want them, they have become very controversial. The plan has been on hold uh, once this year for being expensive. President Obama arrives in Saudi Arabia this morning. He is meeting with Saudi Arabia King Salman in Riyadh to discuss the issues causing tension between the two governments. Iran, the fight against terrorism, and the potential release of documents that link Saudi Arabian official to the September 11 attacks. Before leaving for the Middle East, Obama said he hopes the confidential documents will be released even though the information in the report might not be conclusive. Obama will finish his trip by visiting Germany where he plans to tour the largest industrial trade show to talk about challenges that Europe is still facing. The United 
Nations Refugee Agency says 500 immigrants are dead after a ship sank in the Mediterranean last week. UN officials say this could be one of the worst tragedies involving immigrants, immigrants in the past year. There were only 41 survivors, 37 of the survivors were men, three were women and one was a child. The UN Refugee Agency interviewed their survivors yesterday. They said they were on a boat near Turbrook, Libya with 200 people when smugglers tried to transfer the passengers to the, a larger ship. The larger ship overturned and sank. Most of the people who did survive had not board, boarded the ship yet. The Texas governor is declaring a state of disaster in and around the Houston area after two days of flooding. Seven people have died in the flood and more than a thousand have been rescued. Houston has received 17 inches of rain in less than 24 hours and is still expecting one to, th one to three inches in the upcoming days. Residents are swimming out of their homes and leaving personal belongings behind. The city is offering shuttle services for residents to go back to their homes and recover any sal salvageable items. The county's flood control district says the flood has caused more than $5 billion in property damages in Harris County. It is the biggest flood since the tropical storm Allison in 2001 that left 42 dead. New York primary voters have brought Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton closer to their parties presidential nominations. Trump, Trump took 31 percent of the GOP vote over Governor John Kasich, while Clinton took 58 percent over Bernie Sanders. Trump celebrated his victory saying, mathematically speaking, his competitor Ted Cruz is out of the race for the presidential nomination. Clinton also celebrated her win by saying she feels honored to be trusted with the responsibilities that await the next president, the and she feels confident of her victory. The nomination is in the home stretch, and victory is in sight. The next primaries will take place next Tuesday in Delaware, Connecticut, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. Now let's go to Eric K. Back for the latest on health. Thanks, Susanna. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say white women born this year have a slightly lower life expectancy than the year before. Life expectancy is the number of years you're expected to live based on a statistical average. White women's life expectancy has decreased because of depression and the use of tobacco, which causes lung cancer. But American men and Hispanic men, uh, men's life expectancy has increased due to the decline of murders. The overall life expectancy at birth for the United States population did not change. It stands at about 78 years. Millions of Californians are living in places with dirty air. Bakersfield tops the American Lung Association's list with unhealthy, unhealthy airborne particles. Pollution comes from highway traffic, diesel trucks, farm equipment, and fireplaces. Los Angeles remains the nation's leader in the ozone pollution mainly from car, from car tailpipes. Air pollution can cause asthma attacks and heart attacks. It can lead to lung cancer and even death. Now let's go to Ebony Hardiman with the entertainment report. Thanks, Eric. Michael Strahan wants his fans to know he's not dying. The former NFL player announced yesterday he's leaving live with Kelly and Michael for a full-time role on ABC's Good Morning America. It's funny because now most people, a lot of men, all the men who used to come up and congratulate me on football and now congratulate me on Kelly and Michael. Strahan says he wants everyone to stop being so sad about the change. He has been guest starring on GMA since 2014 and will take on his full-time role in September. Co-star Kelly Ripa was absent from the show this morning and has not made a comment on Strahan's leaving. His replacement has not yet been announced, but... He says he will always be available to guest host in the future. Actress Jennifer Aniston has been named People Magazine's Most Beautiful Woman of 2016. This is the magazine's 26th annual issue featuring the Most Beautiful Woman, and Aniston won the title before in 2004. She's also second to Sandra Bullock as the oldest woman to win the honor. Aniston says that her win is all thanks to taking better care of herself and her body. The magazine will hit stands on Friday, and Aniston will return to the big screen in Mother's Day next week. That's all for entertainment. Now back to Eric with the latest in sports. Thanks, Ebony. After a few strong series against previous teams, the Dodgers did not have a strong game against the Atlanta Braves last night. Starting pitcher Alex Wood used to be a Braves player, but was recently traded to the Dodgers. Last night was his debut against the Braves, and he barely lasted four innings after giving up six runs. 
the Dodgers picked up their only run in the fifth inning. The Braves, gave, the Braves gave no mercy to the Dodgers and ran in two more runs in the seventh. Dodgers had a total of five hits, but were not able to utilize those for runs. The Dodgers will be playing Atlanta again today. The San Antonio Spurs took on the Memphis Grizzlies last night in Game 2 of the Best of Seven First Round Playoff Series. The Spurs came out looking rolling as Kawhi Leonard goes against Matt Bard's baseline, gets the dunk to go in the first quarter to put him up seven. Boris Diaw kicks it out to Patty Mills for three from downtown to, cut, to get the lead up to double digits in the first half. We cut to the second half now, Kawhi against Matt Barnes again, and another powerful dunk. San Antonio went on to win the game 94-68 and will play in Memphis for Game 3. The Clippers look to take a 2-0 lead in their series against the Portland Trailblazers tonight at 7.30 at Staples Center. That's all for sports. Now let's go back with Ebony with the latest in business. Thanks, Eric. Utah Governor Gary Herbert signed two bills declaring pornography as a public health hazard. The resolution says it's harmful because women are viewed as objects. The bill supporters say porn also promotes violence toward women and children by increasing the demand for sex trafficking and child sexual abuse. The resolution says Utah will be the first state to pass such a bill. This doesn't mean pornography is completely banned. Supporters say the two bills are to raise awareness and education. A new poll shows employees may have a false sense of safety in their workplace. CareerBuilder took a poll of 3,000 people, and the majority of them say they feel their job is a safe place to work. But less than half of them say their job has a security guard, and one in five say they don't know how they would defend themselves in case of a physical threat in their workplace. The poll went on to ask about how safe they felt in their workplace is in terms of, in terms of natural disasters and severe weather. Most people said they don't feel secure in any of these situations. Now let's go to Matador News reporter Michael Ramirez in the newsroom covering this cloudy day. Thanks, bud. Today's 420 out of 365 days. Today's a national weed day in America. 420 is standard police code for people smoking marijuana illegally. But now more and more states are allowing people to smoke. Many people are celebrating in different parts of the United States. And LA is an exception. Pennsylvania became a 24th state to legalize medical marijuana. Some season students say they plan to celebrate. Plenty of friends that smoke, but I personally just don't choose not to smoke. What do you think that they're doing right now? Probably in their dorm room or a car or somewhere private, trying to smoke. If we do ban it, then it'll only be promoted more. So I guess just legalize it, and it's up to, to the individual to make the decision. I'm about to blaze it. <laughs> I guess, what type of celebration are you guys going to have? A smoke fest, that's septo. <laughs> I think it should be legalized. I mean, marijuana relaxes the fuck out of me, and it's like chill, you know? <laughs> On the November ballot, California voters will decide whether or not marijuana should be legalized. Not to be blunt, now. Let's go back to the studio. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Angel Johnson. I'm Susanna Guzman. I'm Ebony Hardeman. And I'm Eric Kayback.